Hey guys, in the fast lane here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to recalibrate a torque wrench. If you need to purchase any of the items in this video, it'll say shop this video underneath the video. If you're on my website, if you're on my YouTube channel, it'll say shop this video in the top comments. I always pin it to the top comments or in the about me section. Now there's a few ways that you can recalibrate your torque wrench. The first way is with weights. So you can take yourself some weights, put it on a scale, and you can pretty much dial it in that way by hanging it off the torque wrench. The second way is with a digital torque adapter right here. This will pretty much go on the torque wrench and then you put this in the vise and you can go ahead and turn it and it will dial it in that way. Now every torque wrench has a different adjustment location. With this Ampro here, you lock it in a vise, you take off this back nut and then you'll be able to adjust the ring underneath to make an adjustment. With this KD tools here, it's behind the back handle, you pop this back cap off, there's a locking nut and then an allen key and you can turn the allen key to make an adjustment. Now with a Tecton torque wrench, the adjustment location is going to be somewhere in this vicinity on the actual extension. It'll be a little black grommet that you pop out and then you'll be able to put an allen key on there to make an adjustment that way. So when recalibrating a torque wrench using weight, we need to make a few measurements. So the first measurement we're going to make is we're going to set it right over here where the socket would be. So we're going to measure half of where the socket would be. This is a 3 8 and we come back and if you choose 14 inches, make your mark there. If you choose 15 inches, make your mark there, just depending on where your handle is at. Usually you kind of want to be, I personally like it more towards the back because that's where I put more weight when I push. So in that case, I would do 15. So I'll make my mark at 15 and then I'll take that number, I'll divide it by 12 because one foot equals 12 inches. And then you take that number and you take the weight that you're going to be using and you divide it by the weight. And then that'll tell you what you need to put your torque wrench at. So if your weight comes out to be 70 pounds, set your torque wrench to 70. And then when you put that weight on there, it's always going to be 70 foot pounds and you need to make an adjustment according to that. So the ideal weight I found with the 3H torque wrench is you come over here to the driver tang, you get half of the driver tang. You measure it from here to here, you get 15 inches, mark it on your handle, and we'll take 15 inches, so we'll take 15, and then we'll divide it by 12 inches or in a foot, so divide it by 12. That gives you 1.25 feet, and then I found 40 pounds works great for this, so I'll use 40 pounds of weight, so I'll take 40 pounds of weight, and I'll multiply it times 1.25, so 40 pounds, that gives me 50 foot pounds. So that means when I use 40 pounds at this 15 inch mark right here that I need to set the torque wrench to 50 pounds. So once I place the 40 pounds hanging off a rope right here and it clicks, that means that it clicked, it should click at 50 pounds. If it doesn't then that means I need to adjust it. Now when weighing your weight on a scale there's a few ways you can do it. If you don't have dumbbell weights you can always grab some brake rotors just laying around or any other things such as a jack. And you can stand on the weight scale yourself by holding the item and just deduct your weight. So first go ahead and weigh yourself, then hop off, write that number down, then grab the item that you're going to weigh, stand back on the scale, and then subtract both numbers from each other. And that will give you what the item weighs. Also, most scales, when you step on them up top or the left, they don't activate. So the sensors are usually in the bottom here, so you kind of want to focus that weight more towards the right bottom, bottom right or bottom left. So when you push there, it comes on, but if you push here and there, it won't come on. So that's where these little sensors are located at, and these are just able to move in and out, but they probably don't have a sensor. So what I've done is slid both pieces of rope down, leave a little loop big enough for the handle, and then I'll tie a nice knot on the bottom, and then this will be able to slide over the torque wrench handle. So what I've done is I found this piece of metal and I slid the rope through it on the bottom. And then on the top I got my loop. Now this actually gets me right at 40 pounds, this little contraption I made up. So we'll go ahead and see what it weighs. Should be right at 40 pounds. Remember I said put it towards the back. And we got 40 pounds exactly. Now we have 40 pounds of weight. We have 15 inches marked on our handle. And we need to set our torque wrench to 50 pounds. So I'm going to set it to 50. I'm going to put a 19 millimeter 3 8 socket on there. And we're going to set it level on that lug nut. 
So we have our 19 millimeter socket on there. We're gonna get it on the lug nut and you want it level because the higher you go, it's actually gonna take away from the effectiveness of that weight. Our torque wrench is set to 50 pounds and now we're gonna take our weight and set it right on this 15 inch mark. Now we're gonna let go. So we don't have any click, so that means it's too tight. So we need to come back here and adjust this Allen key. To make a quick adjustment, you just pop that back cap off. You're gonna take some needle nose pliers and you're gonna get in there and back off that nut. Now I say this because you can't get a 17 millimeter six point in there or 11 sixteenths six point in there. So that's the size of the nut, but they make this lip here pretty much impossible to get the socket in there. It stops right here. So go ahead, loosen that nut, and then we can adjust that Allen key. The Allen key is a 732 for this particular torque wrench. Now with this weight on here, we can still adjust it. We just need to lift up as we're loosening that Allen key. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen that nut in there. So grab hold of that nut and back it off half a turn. So then the Allen key will be able to move. And once we've done that, we'll stick the Allen key in there, lift up on the weight, and then you're able to adjust it. So let the weight go again, nothing, lift up, and you're gonna repeat this process until you get it to click. There it is. So remember, lefty loosey, righty tighty. Now once you have your torque wrench dialed into 50 pounds with the weight, you're gonna to wanna to double check your work. So move it from 50 up to 55 pounds, lift the weight, see if it clicks. If it doesn't click, drop it back down to 54, 53, 52, 51. If you get no clicks, go down to 49, still no clicks, then you know you're dialed in at 50 and you're good to go. Then what you'll do is you'll come in here and you'll just lock this nut in. So you grab that nut and turn it real tight. Now that we've adjusted the 3 8 with weights, I'm gonna show you how to adjust it with a digital torque adapter. So this one right here, this is a power built, and it comes with an adapter right here that you can put on for the half inch, and this will go in your vise, allowing you to calibrate your torque wrenches. Pretty neat little extra add-on. So basically with this, there's a few settings. There's a power button right here. So you hit the power button, and then you can hit the memory and the trace button together, and that'll change whether you want it to be newton meters, foot pounds, you know, kilograms, and you just hit it until it keeps adjusting. So you go all the way to kilom or newton meters, and then you press the two again, and that brings you to foot pounds. Another thing to point out, what's the difference between peak and trace? Well, the difference is, is peak will remember your highest torque it got to. So when you're torquing that torque wrench and it hits 50 foot pounds and it cracks and then it goes away, it'll lock that in and show you 50 foot pounds. Where trace, trace is live. So if you're pulling it and it hits 50 and then you let go, it goes back down to zero. So we want to set ours to peak. So right now it's trace and there's peak. So leave it at peak and that'll tell you the last known torque. Now to adjust it to the torque setting that you want to calibrate at, the plus here will add torque and the minus will subtract torque. Now what we'll do with this digital torque adapter is we'll take the adapter, put it on there, set it in the vise, and then you're going to want to tighten this vise really good. Now we're going to go ahead and put the torque wrench on the digital torque adapter, power it on, and gently pull. And make sure you're set to peak because if you're not set to peak, the reading will go away immediately. It'll go back to zero. Peak lets the last locked in torque spec show on there. So we're going to go ahead and pull it slowly. And that was 73.3. Let's do another one. 71.6 and we'll do one more. 71.4. So that's actually within spec. 
Now, if your torque wrench didn't pan out as well as mine did, you can always take off this back nut here, get access to the adjustment ring. So clockwise is a positive adjustment and counterclockwise is a negative adjustment. If you happen to have the tech ton version, basically it'll be in this vicinity. There'll be a little black grommet. You pop that out and then you can go right with the adjustment or left with the adjustment. Right is positive and left is negative. Now torque specs are rated within 4%, 3 to 4%, somewhere around there. So this is definitely within spec. And I actually calibrated this one earlier with weights. So that really says a lot about the weights. Let's go ahead and test the one we just did with weights. And I promise I have not touched the adjustment on that since I last adjusted it with the weights. So this is the first time seeing what it actually did. Now with the 3 8 you're gonna wanna get an adapter. So this is gonna go from 3 8 to half inch adapter. And we'll go ahead and stick that right on the digital torque adapter. Power it on. And let's see what happens. Gently pull back. 47. Do it again. 48.8. 49.9. Wow, that's really, really close. So that's, that's pretty awesome. I mean, we actually calibrated this just a little bit ago with just weights. And it's, I mean, you don't really get much more accurate than 49.9. That's way beyond 4% spec. That's like 0.1%. It's crazy. I give you my word, I have not touched this torque wrench since I just last adjusted it with the weights. Those dumbbell weights, that was the only adjustment I did to this thing and then brought it right here to the vise after I just did the half inch and that's what we got. So that says a lot about weights. You can get extremely accurate with weights. In closing, always back off your torque wrench. If you don't back it off and loosen it down to zero, it's gonna keep the spring tension in there and the longevity of your torque wrench is kinda of gonna go out the window. So make sure you back it all the way down to zero every time you're done using it and then put it in storage. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell. If you don't hit the bell, you will not get notified of my future uploads. That's how the YouTube algorithm works. It's a two-step process. You have to hit subscribe and then you have to hit the bell. So make sure you hit the bell. And if you're already a subscriber and you haven't hit the bell, make sure that you've hit the bell so you can keep up with my future uploads.